Hey everybody, welcome to Crazy Tech Lab and I've got an awesome video for you today because we are finally getting back into some mini ITX action and this time we have the MSI MPG B760i Edge Wi-Fi. So this is a board that I've been looking forward to reviewing for quite a long time for the simple reason that it seems to be offering one of the best bangs for your buck if you want to get into Intel's 12th or 13th gen CPUs for a very reasonable amount of money. So motherboards are pretty expensive at the moment and not least of all those Z790 or Z790 motherboards. We absolutely love them and we're going to be talking about MSI's version in a minute, the Z790 version of this board. It's fantastic but it is pretty expensive. So we're going to be comparing this board against that one to work out which one you should buy and we'll be delving into the features of this board as well as some performance stuff later on in the video. So first of all, thanks to MSI for sending over this sample and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe on this video as well. If you want to see more mini ITX stuff, then don't forget to hit that subscribe button and just show your support and also so you're notified when I upload a new video. So I've got lots of cool stuff in the pipeline. First though, a word from our sponsor. Our sponsor today is scdkey.com, where right now you can get great deals on software such as Windows 10, Windows 11, and Microsoft Office. And even better is I've got a 25% discount code to share with you guys. Windows 10 Professional, for example, which is fully upgradable for free to Windows 11. All you have to do is click buy now, enter the code CRT25 into the promotion code box, click apply, and the US price will drop from $22 nine cents down to just sixteen dollars fifty seven cents and in the uk you'll see the price fall to just twelve pounds seventy nine once you've paid head over to your order page click the get key button and copy your windows key code when you're in windows you want to move your mouse over to the start button right click go to settings then update and security and then move up to activation and finally click on change your product key copy and paste your brand new product key into the box click next then click activate and your Windows 10 installation is now activated. You can do the exact same thing with Office 2021 Professional, CRT 25, click apply and you will see a hefty discount. Thanks again to SCDKey for sponsoring today's video. So there are some pretty interesting differences between this board and the Z790 version. And if you're looking for a very attractive white slash silver Mini ITX motherboard, I can highly recommend that you also look at the Kingston Fury Renegade memory. So we've actually got the DDR5 version of this board. There is DDR4 as well, which we'll get onto in a minute. But DDR5, I can highly recommend that Kingston memory. As you can see, it's looking absolutely sick on this board. So don't forget to check out the description link and buy link in the description below if you want to match this board to that memory. So that is the first interesting thing about this motherboard, which is that it does support DDR4 and DDR5. Now, you can't use the set, th those two different types of memory on this one board. You either buy the DDR5 version or you get the DDR4 version. But at least that means that you can potentially save even more money if you've got a, a set of DDR4 memory that you want to transplant into this motherboard. So I really like that move from MSI because it means that if you want to do that, you can and save some extra cash. Or if you want to invest in the DDR5 ecosystem, because prices are pretty much as good now as they've ever been for a you know a 32 gigabyte set of decent speed DDR5 memory. So if you want to do that, you can. You have the option. So I like that move from MSI to start with. Other considerations we have, well, obviously we have the price. Now, for the DDR4 version of this board, you're looking at around £200 or $200 in the US. If you go up to the DDR5 model, you're looking at around £230 or around $220. So there is a small markup for some reason for the DDR5 version of this board. Now, if you step up to the Z790 or Z790i Edge Wi-Fi, then you are going to have to spend considerably more. So you're looking at £349, so £110 more even than the DDR5 version and £150 more than the DDR4 version of the, Z, uh, of the B760i Edge Wi-Fi. So you're having to spend a significant amount more to go for the Z. Uh, the Z790i Edge Wi-Fi, and in the US, you've got $350, so it's pretty much the same in dollars and pounds, $350, and obviously you'd be spending about $130 more 
than the DDR5 version of the B760i Edge Wi-Fi, while the Z790 version retails for around $150 more than the uh, B760i Edge Wi-Fi DDR4 version. So some significant price bumps there if you go for the Z790i Edge Wi-Fi. Now, neither board has PCI Express 5 on its M.2 slots, so that there isn't really any point in going for this board if you want to go for, if you want a uh, PCI Express 5 SSD, such as the Corsair MP700 that we reviewed recently. You can see that in a banner out up above to see just how fast it was. But also we have three M.2 slots on the Z790i Edge Wi-Fi. And having three M.2 slots on a Mini ITX motherboard is quite a boon. It's something that I'm definitely considering for my next Mini ITX rig. I've actually got an MSI Z490i Unify in my current rig at the moment. But having three M.2 slots is actually quite beneficial because if you only have two and you really want to max out your um, SSD based storage, you're going to have to opt for four terabyte SSDs. And that is a huge money pit because they cost significantly more or you're paying way more than double the cost of a two terabyte SSD. Now there are some pretty good deals out there with four terabyte SSDs at the moment, but my favorite approach would definitely be for going something like um, two two terabyte SSDs, you know, PCI Express 4 or something like that, and then going for the cheapest four terabyte model that I can find just for all that, you know, extra storage, or maybe even just going for triple two terabytes and having six terabytes of storage um, in, in your flash storage on one motherboard. So obviously you cannot do that with this board because it's only got two slots, but still that's enough for, you know, one really fast, uh, two terabyte M.2 SSD, probably PCI Express 4 or something like that, and then maybe you know really cheap PCI PCI Express 3, uh, two terabyte drive, or maybe even a four terabyte one if you if you can get that. So there's still the potential here, but two uh, two slots is kind of what every other board has, which is a bit boring really. Um, but then again, that's what your uh, MSI is hoping that you will upgrade to the Z790 Z790. Keep saying that, um, but. Yeah, it's just it's just one of those carrot on a stick things for the Z790 board in addition to some other features that we'll get onto in a minute. Obviously, you have overclocking support on the Z790 board as well and as you can see in another banner up above, overclocking CPUs such as the Core i5-13600K is really beneficial, very easy to do and can actually make the CPU run a lot faster and cooler as well as well as, well as more power efficient which is pretty cool. So definitely check out that overclocking guide using an MSI BIOS as well so you can copy all the settings that I've got in there and apply them on this, not this motherboard, the Z790 version. So that's another reason why you might want to upgrade to the Z790 version but to be honest, the CPUs such as the Core i5-13600K are still going to be pretty damn fast out of the box. It, they are surprisingly fast. Yeah, they're quicker when they're overclocked, but there's nothing wrong with buying a K-series CPU and not overclocking it. I know that's kind of why a lot of people think you should buy them, but they are actually a lot faster than the non-K edition versions anyway, because they boost higher. So any argument saying, oh, why have you bought a, um, a B-series motherboard with a K-series CPU? Get out of here, you're not making any sense because those CPUs are at, are worth buying if even if you're running them at stock speed. So that's a, a moot point as far as I'm concerned. So moving on down the feature set and we are looking at a slight downgrade in audio. Uh, you get ALC4080 uh, with the Z790 board whereas you only get ALC897 with the board that we have here. And that is a bit of a step down. It's um, The performance isn't dire but it's kind of it's a pretty basic audio codec. So obviously on a mini ITX board, upgrading the audio is very, very difficult unless you use like a, a USB DAC or something like that. So that's just something to bear in mind as well. Now, the final real sort of benefit that you're gonna see is the USB 3.2 uh, support. So the Z790, Z790 uh, board is going to offer you USB 3.2 Gen 2x2, which offers double the bandwidth of just standard 3.2. 
um, Gen 2, and you're going to see that on the Type C port on the rear panel and on the front panel or, and the front panel connector as well. So you're getting a lot more bandwidth with the Z790 board than this one. This one just has the standard um, 10 gigabit Type C. Uh, going through the rear Type-C uh, type port and the front panel Type-C port for your case. So that's another upgrade you'll get. Now, finally, looking at the power delivery, we have eight plus one plus one power phases on the B760 board and 10 plus one plus one on the Z790 board. So uh, there's probably not going to be that much difference there unless you go for... Uh, the Core i5, uh, sorry, Core i9 13900K or the KS models, but I'm guessing you're probably not going to be doing that on this board. So yeah, sure, if you want to get one of the higher end CPUs like Core i7, Core i9, and you want to overclock it or um, you know tweak the uh, the power settings or something like that, then you're probably going to want to go for the Z790 board anyway. So I don't really think that the power delivery is going to have that much of a difference. And as we can see, the cooling on this board is pretty good anyway. And we will look at the VRM temperatures and stuff later on too. So that's pretty much it from the specs comparison, price comparison, and those kind of things. So you can kind of see that there are some noticeable upgrades with the Z790 board, but if you're just wanting to chuck in a CPU, chuck in some memory, DDR4 or DDR5, and have a great looking mini ITX rig, even with a K-series CPU, this board kind of does everything that you want it to do. So let's crack on with the rest of the video and look at some performance numbers. So we've got a few bits of data to look through in the performance analysis, starting with the audio performance. And we have a couple of other boards in the graph as well, the ASUS ROG Strix Z690i Gaming Wi-Fi and the Gigabyte Z690i Aorus Ultra Plus. So both those boards, I believe, have the Realtek 4080 codec, so that's maybe slightly more advanced than the one that's on the MSI MPG B66, B760i Edge Wi-Fi. So still though, it's not performing that badly. It's uh, not that far away from the Gigabyte board, but the ASUS board um, obviously got some pretty decent audio uh, on that board. Although you'd be hard pressed to tell the difference between any of these boards uh, realistically in games and music, unless you're super, super into your music or have it coming through a really high quality set of headphones or speakers or something. So. Uh, but that's how the audio performs, so it's not it's not terrible, uh, but it's far from the best out there in terms of quality. Now, moving on to the VRM temperature, this is with a Core i9-3900K during a 10-minute load test, so that's probably more than most of us would ever encounter unless you're rendering or doing something that forces a 100% CPU load. You, you wouldn't see it go this high in games, but even here... We're looking at a peak VRM temperature of 59 degrees C, which is well away from any thermal throttling areas. And finally then, we've got the M.2 peak temperature. So this was with a PCI Express 4 SSD, which is pretty much the fastest model you can actually fit and get working properly in this motherboard. Obviously not supporting the latest PCI Express 5 SSDs, which run pretty hot. So the Kingston is kind of uh, middle of the road. It's a fairly hot running um, SSD, but not quite the hottest out there. So 72 degrees C, about 8 or degrees C, um, or thereabouts away from any kind of thermal throttling. And that was on my test bench as well. So that's not even with any kind of local airflow like you might get in a case or with an air cooler or anything like that. The, uh, the test system was water-cooled. So that's probably the worst scenario that you will see um, for a heatsink. So um, obviously not a massive heatsink on the board, but it has the advantage of only dealing with one SSD, whereas a lot of other mods um, out there, they are dealing with two. They have two um, SSDs, uh, or two M.2 ports, should I say, on the top side of the board, and those small heatsinks having to deal with both of them. One of the best B760 Mini ITX boards out there right now. It's very reasonably priced, whether you're buying it here in the UK or the US. And whether or not you go for the DDR4 or the DDR5 version is kind of up to you, really. If you want to spend a little bit more and go for DDR5, you're probably not going to see that much more performance, but at least you'll have that memory um, with you and you'll be able to um, upgrade you know, to a different motherboard or something in future and probably use that same memory. Now, if you go for the DDR4 version, 
that's fine if you've got a memory kit that you want to transplant from an older system into it but where i would maybe be a bit reluctant is to get this board and buy new ddr4 memory it kind of seems like it's a great option at the moment but with the way that things are going uh, things are, you know, you're going to have to upgrade to DDR5 eventually because Intel's next platform is going to be DDR5. Most of the decent motherboards on um, Intel's current uh, sockets are DDR5 only, and AMD, if you swap sockets in future, is DDR5 only from here on in. So, kind of a swings and roundabouts argument there, but again, even if you do opt for DDR5, you are going to be saving money compared to going for DDR5. So it depends whether you want to go on a get a really good mini ITX motherboard but save as much money as possible, in which case you probably go the DDR4 route whether you're saving where you've got a kit to transplant or you're buying a, a you know a discount DDR5 kit or something. If you've got a little bit more money to spend, I would highly recommend going for the DDR5 version and I would definitely cut it out with the Kingston uh, Fury Renegade white memory that we've got here, the DDR5 memory, and there is a link to that in the description below. So I really, really like the performance of this board as well. It's pretty solid. It's not chart topping in terms of the audio and other things, but everything else that we've seen is on the ball and you're gonna have no problem shoving a couple of M.2 SSDs in here and probably like a Core i5 or Core i7, maybe even a K-series CPU. Even a 13900K will work absolutely fine on this board. So that's it from me today. I'd like to thank MSI again for sending over the motherboard and thanks to our sponsor today. Don't forget to check out all the links for those cheap Windows keys in the description below as well as buy links to all the hardware that you've seen in today's video. So that's it from me. I'll catch you soon.